Hey all here OS Reviews, this shiny shiny box contains what's called the Servo K7. It's one of the most bizarre novelty phones that I've ever seen. It's in the shape of a ballpoint pen so you can use it to write notes so just like any other regular pen, but it also combines essentially a feature phone with a tiny little display that you can use to make phone calls, use it as an mp3 player, even claims to have a flashlight, and even a very basic camera for capturing some stealthy shots. Now this sells for about $30, so it's also fairly inexpensive as perhaps a backup phone, kind of a novelty item. And the company Servo also is not new to making unusual phones. If you guys recall, last year we checked out the S08 by their same company, and it was a fidget spinner cell phone. Which so this is, again, using a novelty concept and packing a phone inside, just now in the form of a ballpoint pen. It takes a nano SIM and also a micro SD card to expand the built-in memory if you want to use it for um, MP3 music in addition to recording voice memos, things like that. And uh, it can also be a companion device, so you can connect to a regular smartphone, and if there's a call coming in from the regular phone, you can pick it up on the pen, uh, if you're perhaps in the middle of something, and you can also sync over your contacts list, things like that. And there's also a optional companion app that you can install to use it as a Bluetooth selfie remote, so you can use it to kind of click and capture a photo, which is interesting. Now this is a 2G phone that's unlocked and uh, quad band, so it's only going to really work with T-Mobile bands these days in the United States. Uh, but of course with a device like this, you don't really need to use it for web browsing or anything fancy, so 2G is perfectly fine for voice calls. We've got an instruction manual. In addition, we have the K07 right on top. Here's a micro USB cable for charging the phone, and here are the four pen tips that it comes included with. So taking a closer look at this uh, phone pen, it uh, is constructed out of a polycarbonate plastic, so it does feel very lightweight, but not too flimsy. If you kind of move it and shake it, it doesn't really creak or cringe too much. Still feels quite solid. Rear here features the VGA quality camera. There's a loudspeaker. Front here has the earpiece and the microphone on the bottom. If you're holding it to your face, it looks really strange. Um, kind of like a Bluetooth headset or in a way as strange as the Nokia Taco phone. Now here we have a regular highlighter and you can see that it's actually not too far off in terms of size. So this thing is very much easy to put into a pocket or into a backpack, into a pouch and then take with you. Next to the other feature phone we checked out recently, the Xiaomi Qin Q1S and you can see that it's a about the same height, but is smaller overall. Now it is a very modular design in the sense that the top here is a part that you can pull off, that you can access the micro USB port for charging, and more importantly there's an LED light or torch that you can use as a flashlight from the top. Um, you can also use this cap to kind of pop onto the bottom here when you put the ink cartridge in, just to prevent the ink from drying out. But the result of if you pop it from the base is that the top looks exposed and not very finished, so it's a little bit strange. Personally, I would have preferred if they had kind of a twisting mechanism on the bottom here just to retract the ink instead. Now, of course, the ink cartridges are very small, as you saw there, because it's not really giving us enough space to protrude all the way in. So the actual size of the cartridge is pretty shallow. It's not going to last for that long, which is why they provide four of them in the box, but that's a side note. Other modular part here is really the base of the pen. You can find a little latch here and you can apply pressure to peel off another plastic base that contains the tiny 300 milliamp hour capacity battery. You can see the speaker, the camera, and then underneath here is where you'll find the SIM card slash micro SD card slots. Tapping on the hang up phone key that also serves as the power button and the tiny little 0.96 inch screen beeps onto life. Here it is next to a quarter, which you can see is even larger. So it's a tiny screen, gets kind of covered up by your thumb. Same thing goes with the keyboard, covers up by your thumb. So this is tiny. The screen is, is surprisingly bright. It does get a little bit distorted because it has that round plastic on top. So it kind of reflects the light a little bit and makes it kind of shine in a weirdly satisfying way when you're pointing it at various angles. It is dual SIM, there's a battery status, 
and has the time and date down below. There are shoulder keys down below, but before that is a row that doesn't control the menus. It's just for music controls. There's skip track and a stop slash play pause key. And then the actual shoulder keys are on the side. You can have to really press down with your fingernails, uh, but to access the thing, you just go up and down like a carousel. There's a call, a phone book, there's messaging. Multimedia is basically taking a look at uh, different files that you have on your SD card. You can launch up the camera. So if we do that right now, the camera has started up. And again, it's pointing on the base here, and you can see my hand. Uh, the screen is, again, surprisingly not too bad. It is actually an IPS display, so viewing angles aren't terrible. And then you can tap on the 5 button, as you can see there, to capture the shot. So the 5 is the middle key, and it's going to be saved to your memory. Um, so there it is. There's also the image viewer, which we should be able to see just the image that we took a look at, uh, captured, and we can take a look at that. There's some other images from our sample SD card. Look at how tiny that is, but that's just kind of cool in a very strange way. That is smaller than you know even a penny in terms of the, the text on there. Interesting in kind of a geeky way, but not in a very practical way, that's for sure, next to our modern day devices. But I can cycle through the different images and um, kind of view them back, and you can just about kind of make back what these images are. So there it is. Um, in terms of options, you can do, again, send them, you can use it as wallpaper, you can even rotate the images. So if I do that, it's going to now be rotated like this, which is perhaps a little bit easier to see. So that is what it is, a very basic interface here for controlling the music, play pause, nothing too extraordinary. And there is that sound recorder here, which allows us to begin recording some quick memos. Now there's also a basic FM radio on here, so you can see that it doesn't require headphones for it to function, but I can do things like a long hold to try and find different channels. And it is functional. Next feature is going to be a basic organizer. So there is something called a magic voice, uh, basically a voice changer. Um, so if I tap on this, you can actually change your voice from being a man, a woman, or a child. So the next time that you call someone, you can disguise your voice. So that's an interesting little kind of secondary spy-like feature. Very basic cal calendar on here. So this is tiny, uh, but at least fills up the screen. There's a torch here, which we can access also by pressing 7 the torch will be opened. It's using a simple LED, so it is very energy efficient, and it does work. So if you're in the dark and trying to write something, it is a little flashlight feature that you can find access to. Uh, next one here just connects to Bluetooth devices and then cycles back to your phone book. So it just goes in a continuous loop, pretty easy and simple, as well as straightforward. Now I can type out any letter from the main screen here, basically to begin making a call, and that's also quite self-explanatory, not too many issues there. Reception quality, at least here in the Seattle region with 2G uh, with T-Mobile, is also decent. I was able to make a phone call without too many hassles. Earpiece is pretty loud. Uh, microphone is a little bit on the thin side, but um, overall it does indeed work. I guess really the last thing to demo is that indeed it works as a pen, so you can do things like write hello, world and it does function and the neat thing here is actually it's not a half bad pen either it's actually using a gel in here so it's not really that tough to write it's a liquid based ink that is super sensitive you can apply very little pressure and it just instantly kind of flows out as you can see there so it's a very fluid and uh, makes writing just feel quite comfortable surprisingly good ink so there we go. That's been our hands-on review of Servo's K07, this crazy multifunction pen phone that uh, does have its surprisingly decent merits. The pen actually is usable, um, in addition to the fact that, uh, for the most part, the FM radio is stronger than expected, has a few neat software tricks, the camera does indeed work. Granted, it's not something that I'd be happy with using on a daily basis, but uh, for some quick uh, you know, use, uh, kind of as kind of a smartphone that's been detached into a pen, it's uh, actually kind of an interesting conversation starter. So if interested, you can always check out more details in the links down below, but for now, that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been the Servo K07, very quirky pen-based mobile phone.